So you've not got the exact colour you want, you want to blend some colours together? How do we do that? Let's find out. Hey, it's Pam from Ben McFuzzy Lugs and it's a Wednesday so it's another equipment and supplies review. Every Wednesday I make videos a bit like this so if this is something you're interested in don't forget hit thumbs up, subscribe and come back every Wednesday. So today I wanted to talk about techniques to blend fibres because as we've mentioned before sometimes it can be difficult to get the exact colour you want or you don't want a solid dyed colour, you want a little bit of more variegation between the colour so it has light tones and dark tones as if it was natural. So I just wanted to talk about some methods to actually blend fibres. So the first one, if you're just making small sculptures like myself, something that I've done for years is just take a small amount of the fibres that you want and you can just hand blend them. So all I do is gently pull them apart so that just taking the ends and just pulling and restacking and that lets fibres slide over the top of each other in a kind of random pattern and it blends them. It takes a bit of time and you don't want to do it if you want a lot of fibre, it's quite a bit of a pain in the backside, but for just a tiny amount, it totally works to create something like a blend. Also what you can do, it's less pretty, but you can go sideways and fluff up your fibres. This means they're not all going to be all nice kind of roving, they're going to be more like bats by the time you're finished with them. But it does, if you're doing something like a 2D painting, this is a good way to get a bit of a blend of colour in. It works quite quickly on a small scale. If you're doing anything larger, it's a nightmare because it takes forever. You can, if you're wanting a large amount of fibre, there are companies who would do that for you if you just ask for a custom blend. And you can also splash out or build yourself expensive bits of kit like a drum carder or hand blenders. But another thing you can use are dog slicker brushes. Now I'll leave a link to these down in the comments and in the description below if you're interested in these. Now don't laugh at my technique, I don't card very often but I'm just going to show you how I do it just to make a nice little blend of fibres. Now with regular carders they, tend, they can be a lot more curved which might be a little bit easier and um, so I wouldn't be looking at doing at getting bigger slicker brushes than this you just want the nice small ones just for a small amount of carding and all you're going to want to do you kind of work off the end edge rather than the whole thing and we're just going to take the colours you want so I'm blending up some nice oranges you'll see why tomorrow so we're just I'm just going to catch it somewhere towards the middle and pull so we've got a little tail coming over the end here and it's not stuffed up to the, the end by the handle and just catch a little bit and let the ends hang over so they're nice and straight and we'll just load one colour all over the brush I'm going to come in with some other colours the same thing, let's go with a lighter one as well and the trick is to not overload your brush don't put too much on at all it's much easier to do a few little cards than to try and get one massive amount all done at once right and as I say don't slate my technique here this is not something I do much of I'm just showing you how to do a small amount so what you're thinking of mistake number one that so many people do is you think you have to brush across the whole thing and this it just doesn't give you a good result we're working basically just on the edges of the combs so what I do to start I'll just take not even meeting the bristles I'm just brushing out the very ends slightly so you let the fibres catch, you let the teeth catch in the fibre and then just curve up and pull away and then when you're coming back just a little flick up 
so that these fibres don't get doubled over so they stay all floaty up. I'm going to catch an end and rotate up. And you just keep doing this until you've taken off most of what's, until no more is coming off when you do it this way. And then we're just going to meet the teeth ever so slightly and just do the same thing. It's not really brushing so much as it's just attaching, turning and pulling off a small amount. And what's happening is the fibres are going from this brush onto this brush. So set it down on the teeth and turn it up, pull it off. And you just work back a tiny fraction at a time until the first brush is more or less empty. And then we're going to flip over again. I just sort of get the free edges first. This is the easy bit. And you don't want to be using any force at all. This is not hard work at all. I mean, right, when I'm doing it in front of the telly and not trying to show you, I'd hold it more like this. To this kind of angle but I'm trying to demonstrate but nice and easy in no time and you just keep on swapping over until you're happy with the level of blending you've got and I'm actually going to stop about here because I don't want it all the way blended I want to be able to see some nice variation so all you do to get it off the brush is now when we're working the brushes are at 180 degrees to each other. We now flip them together and you're going to roll one down over each other and it comes off. You can do, people do pretty roll legs, they call it for spinning and everything. But this is just for me to use for needle felting. So I just wanted it off the brush. And there you go. In two minutes, I've got quite a nice little blend. So I'm going to say if you're only carding small amounts of fibre and you don't want a massive expense dog slicker brushes, I'll leave a link to where I got these from on my Amazon affiliate link so don't worry it doesn't cost you anything extra to click on on the affiliate link it just helps me out a little bit. But these are the brushes I got. If you have pets you've probably already got some lying about the house um, but definitely I'd buy these for small amounts over more expensive carding brushes. So Ben McFuzzy looks approved. Okay, so thank you so much for joining me. If this is helpful, don't forget, give us a thumbs up and I'll see you next week.